Okay, normal protocol, we'll talk about last week's game and then we'll segue into this uh, upcoming game uh, that we have. Um, again, uh, as I talked about in the press conference after the game, just really, always really excited to get a win over our rival. Always really important for the borderland uh, to be able to get that victory. And so we're really, really pleased about that part of it. Um, and, and I think our team learned again. It was a learning experience. I think we're a team that's going to obviously try to continue to improve throughout the season like everybody does. But I think it'll be really important for us to do that and finding different ways to win. You know, first of all, finding our first win was really important, but finding different experiences. You know, we talked about that, the different experiences we've had through the first three football games. You know, A, uh, not being very pleased with our first performance. B, our second performance doing a lot of positive things. And then C, you know, not playing near as well as we could play and getting ourselves into a dogfight uh, and then winning is still a good learning experience for us. And so we're going to try to grow off of that um, and now try to clean things up, right? That's going to be important for us to clean things up as we move forward into, into week four. Uh, as you know, um, w the things we got to clean up, you know, we got to run the ball more consistently and better. We have to be better uh, in, in the second half. Uh, just our overall performance offensively uh, was not good, and we got to be better on first and second downs, right? Um, that's what was hurting us. And we just had, we just didn't execute. We just left things out there. And, um, you know, we can't do that if we want to continue to improve. And so that part of it is going to be a big emphasis for us. I thought defensively, when you really broke down and watched us play, I thought we played really good. You know, we had some guys have tremendous totals, right? We had some players. When you talk about the numbers that um, Kobe Hilton and Tyrese Knight and Elijah Johnson, uh, Keenan Stewart, the numbers, Cal Wallerstadt, the numbers of production that they had, because we've really talked about uh, being more disruptive defensively. And so we did. We, caught, we had a lot more uh, tackles for losses, a lot more. We had sacks. We had turnovers. And so we had a lot of production numbers, which, which, is, got, was, which is what we need to have uh, to continue to win. The reason the game was close is because we turned the ball over inside their 10 and we turn the ball inside our 10, right? And that's, you, you, that's tough to win games. I bet you if you put again, if you do that in a game, what the percentage of winning is, is very, very low. And so those are the things that, you know, really cost us opportunities, you know, and then the, fun, the, the, the muff punt there at the end of the second quarter where we didn't, weren't able to get on it and grab it, um, you know, would have really, you know, put a, you know, give us a chance to take either a 20 or 24 to nothing lead there at the end of the half. So just missed opportunities, bad execution, missed performance, a combination of all those things uh, are things we're going to work on to get better. But obviously, again, let's go back to it's a win, and I don't think, you know, uh, wins are hard and, and they're good. So we're, we're really, really pleased about that part of it. Um, overall performances, I talked about the defensive guys that um, – did some good things. I thought Ronnie ran the ball well. Ronnie, you know, had some good production all around uh, in his game. I was pleased with the way our tight ends and fullbacks blocked and performed. I thought they did uh, a lot of positive things in that game. Uh, I don't think Gavin played near as well as he played last week in Oklahoma. I don't think he played near as well uh, in the New Mexico State game, and, and, and he could tell you that. Uh, himself, you know, I'm always going to be candid about his performance because we have high expectations for his performance. We expect him to perform like he d does against Oklahoma all the time, and I think he has a great chance to do that. But he didn't perform to the level that he, you know he needs to perform to, um, and uh, we we got to do a better job, uh, like we did the week before against Oklahoma, of getting more of our receivers involved in the game. Right? We just got our top two guys, and we didn't get a whole lot of production. We didn't get a whole lot of reps out of out of our other receivers because of the formation sets that we used. We only played three to four or five receivers, but three of them played, two of them only played less than five snaps, and one of them played 15 snaps. So the other two played, it's because we were in the bigger sets. So obviously we didn't, you know, we tried to play, stay condensed with our game plan and do things we thought would help us win the game. So with that being said, we move into a, a big challenge this week. Um, with, against a team that, um, you know, is improving, right? They're improving as they continue to go through uh, the maturation of their program. 
Uh, they, you know, defensively, they give you a, a variety of looks. It's all, you know, it's all well known that uh, Rocky does a great job with that. Um, and uh, so that'll be a test for every team that plays them. That's a test, right? And you got to have a good game plan. I think it's going to help us uh, because we played them last year. And because we played them last year, we got to work on all those things. And um, we were able, you know, this week, last week, we were able to, you know, spend some time, you know, I was able to spend some time because of the difficulty of the preparation. I was able to spend some time preparing for their stuff, my, you know, uh, throughout the week too. So, so we could get a little bit ahead because they do so many different things uh, defensively. So that was important for us. And I think it, uh, hopefully it'll, you know, help our performance this week as well. So uh, offensively, they, uh, they got a new quarterback, you know, a transfer from KU that's very athletic, does a lot of uh, good things as a playmaker for them. They got a, a new offensive line. There's only one returning starter from last year on their offensive line, but they did a good job, I think, of bringing in some, either bringing in good young talent that they're developing or bringing in some junior college talent uh, at those positions that are going to help them. They got some good experience coming back, a lot of returners at wide receiver coming back, got a transfer player at wide receiver that I also think is a, is a, is a good player for them. And then defensively, they have a lot of team you know, quickness and speed on their defense and, and move around. And so it's going to be important for us to try to negate that as best we can. And that, like I visited about before, that's always the big challenge as you face New Mexico. And then obviously it's the first of back-to-back -back Mountain West opponents that we play. So I think that's always exciting for all of us in the program, exciting for our fan base to be able to play Mountain West teams. And, and uh, we'll be returning to where we, we're going to stay at the same hotel that we stayed at for the bowl game and obviously play in the same site. So there'll be some familiarity for us as a football team uh, with where we're going to be and where we're going to be playing. So I'll open up to questions from there. Coach, uh, do you consider this a, a rivalry game? Is this something for us, you know, to be able to play New Mexico every year and kind of a good, uh, a good uh, difficult Mountain West opponent to play, you know? And so obviously with the proximity and the old, uh, you know, whack ties that, that we have with them. It's really a, a good matchup for us, for sure. And one that I would like to play a lot. Absolutely. Obviously, two and two on the, on the record sheet looks better um, than one and three. I mean, I didn't do, you had to look at this last week as a sure. month, it's kind of another must win. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's big to try to get back to 500, you know? That's big, you know? Um, because as we look at our schedule, as we our, I've talked about it, but our first seven games had just have a, you know, they're not easy, right? They're two of them, you know, two of them are back-to-back -back road games down the stretch here, uh, you know, game six and seven, and then two of your first five are against Boise and Oklahoma, right? And then you have a tough, a perennial high-level North Texas team in your conference to open up the season. So I wish we played a, a easier opponent, right? <laughs> I don't think we had any games uh, on our slate here in the first seven that you can say, gosh, that's an easy win. You're just going to show up and win, right? Uh, none of those, right? So that was part, that's part of our first seven schedule. So obviously, I'd feel really good if we get back to 500, you know, after, after four games. I think we'd be in a great position. So that's probably what makes it a really important game for us. In terms of your offense, I think it's 37 points you scored in the second quarter and then Jeez, yeah. what, has, what has worked, I guess, worked so well in the second quarter for yeah. you? And then how do you maybe transition that? To we, yeah, we got to start better, you know, in the third quarter. We haven't won a coin toss yet, so we haven't got what we want in the third quarter yet to start a third quarter. We're 0 for 3 on coin tosses. I think that might help us to to get us a little bit more momentum coming out of the shoot, you know, with, with, with us having what we wanted to have at the beginning of the game to, to get us to where we wanted to start the third quarter. But we just got to start faster. Uh, in the third quarter. When you go back and look at our third, fourth quarter execution of this game, it's just just tiny things right now, guys. It's just like, gosh dang, there was a lot there that we just didn't quite take advantage of. And um, so that part of it, again, uh, is just execution, you know, for us uh, and being precise in what we're doing. And, and then it, obviously if we can do well early in the third quarter, I think, will really help us to have some good second half momentum. So it's important that we do that. You know, it's really important that we do that. And it's important that we do better in the first quarter too, right? We got to start faster, right? I mean, obviously we had that 
almost nine minute drive to start the game, which normally that's really a really a good thing for you, right? I mean, that's what you want to have. Um, but we always came up with three points out of it, right? So it was eight, I think it was eight, eight minutes and 40 seconds. I didn't look at the stats, but I remember what the scoreboard looked like when we kicked the ball off to them. So those are the kind of drives we want to have, but we got to finish them with touchdowns. Yes, yes, yeah, that we came out real healthy out of this game, so that was really good for us. Um, so that was important. So um, when you talked about the snap from the center position, you juggled between uh, two different guys on Saturday. What, what's kind of the discussion right there, the quarterback snap connection right there? As far as what? Go ahead. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the discussion as to getting that execution? I mean, oh, oh, yes. OK, good. I thought you were talking about uh, quarterback play for New Mexico State. No. Um, yeah, it's got to improve. <laughs> I mean, that we, it, it hasn't been good, and it really was really costly in our first game, right? Uh, when you go back and look on that on the fourth down play where we snapped the ball, uh, and then we had some problems with the snaps again. You know, Merv started the game uh, at center, but he's a really really qualified player, and um, uh, but he had a little trouble in some of the snaps, even though they weren't, they didn't cause us to. Uh, lose yardage, they cause us not to execute effectively. So it's definitely a big area of concern for us right now. And it's a simple thing, right? It's just simple execution of football. And so we're really trying to get that cleared up. And one of the ways we're working on getting that cleared up is every time they have a bad snap in practice, they got 50 floors on the, on the Stairmaster. And so with centers, when you start getting, I think uh, one of them had 250 floors after a practice. So that hopefully that will start getting them better. <laughs> it's always the consequences, I think. On the, on the lines of the offensive line, you did kind of move some different pieces in and around. What, right. What, what, what was some of the uh, just to get some guys. We felt like some guys need experience, and we felt like this was a good game to get those guys some different ex reps and experience uh, at those positions. And so going into this game, you know, we're not sure how those pieces, Stephen Hubbard uh, ended up playing really, really good for us. You know, he's a physical, he had some, really tenacious blocks uh, where he just took guys to the ground, not pancakes, but just really physical football player and super athletic player for us. And we really like the way uh, that he's progressing. We talked about Merv playing some too in the game, gained a lot of experience that way. So I think the more and more we can develop depth on our offensive line, the more it's going to help us. But everybody's cleared to go for this game. You know what I mean? So there's nothing there to talk about, really. It's just we've got some more guys, some reps. So, Looking, you ran the ball a lot more in the first half than New Mexico State than you did the second half. Was that some adjustments they made or you guys made? Or Say that again, Brett. You ran the ball a lot more in the first half. In the first half, yeah. Yeah, you know, we ran the ball. Probably because they're, for a while, I was trying to create some big plays in the passing game, you know, and uh, we were just a little bit off on executing those. And then I didn't feel like we ran the ball as efficiently in the second half either. You know, the runs were, the runs were there. Uh, you know, we had a power called and we missed a block at point of attack, just an easy block by our fullback who's been playing great. And if we hit that, we're probably going to gain 25 yards on the power, maybe score uh, there in the second half. So it's just things like that that were just little nuances. Uh, you know, Trent Thompson's been playing great and he had a cutoff on a zone and he just, he never misses cutoff and he missed it. And, you know, so there's these little things that just, like I said, uh, when I was talking to Colin there, the little things of our execution just got to get cleaned up. Talk a little bit about your linebacker play in the first three games. Are you happy with it? Uh, you might need a little improvement. How do you see it? I think it's been really good. You know, I think Tyrese, um, I don't think Tyrese tackled as well as he's tackled uh, this last game, uh, but I think he was flying around. I don't have the stats in front of me, but he had nine quarterback hurries uh, in the game, Tyrese. Nine quarterback hurries in one game which is unbelievable, and um, some other good production too. So Tyrese is playing at a high level. And then Cal came in, you know, we get our helmet decals, and Cal ended up having, uh, earning 11 helmet decals, and the most you can earn is 12. So his production was really high. James Neal played a lot there more now because we feel like he's probably, you know, one of our very most athletic players on our defense, and he had nine helmet decals and just played 20 snaps. So we really like the production we got out of those guys in this game. So we're, we're pretty happy with that 
you know, that position, uh, you know, right now. Boys had either defense tells you and Emma, I think it was like 120 some yards, 70 of them were on long pass players. Yeah. What was maybe the, the blueprint they used? Yeah, I watched the game live, you know, Friday night. It was great. It was on, it was on TV and I was able to watch it, you know, as well as watch and break down the film of it, um, you know, Saturday or Sunday. I think we broke down the film of it uh, as well. So, um, you know, Boise played real physical up front. You know, their D-line did a really good job uh, of being physical, especially at their D-end positions. They, they were really disruptive um, and, and, and played physical high-level football, you know, because I do think that New Mexico's quarterback is a really athletic, good player, and I think they got good talent at their skill positions. And so for Boise to put that, I thought Boise really raised their level of play for that game. And uh, coming off the Oregon State game, you know, for Boise, I think they came in, you know, angry and trying to prove that, hey, we're the, we're the best, you know, us in Fresno are the two best in the Mountain West, and that's not changing, you know. And I think they made a statement that way, Boise did. So I don't think it was, I'm being totally honest now, I'm not coach speaking. I don't think it was anything that makes me think that New Mexico can't, you know, do some good things on offense. It was just really good play by Boise. That's my truthful thought on the, you know, on, on their offense. Against Gavin at, uh, against New Mexico State, um, what what kind of things did you see from him that you want to see improved? Is it decision making, timing, or all? just uh, uh, not decision making as much as just execution of his throws? You know, the execution in in Oklahoma, he was flawless. I mean, completely flawless and precise. He never put a ball in a bad spot. He put it on the money in the right spot. And, and, and last weekend, in the second half, he just you know, didn't do the things he'd been doing uh, in the previous five, six quarters of play uh, leading up to that second half. So I just think he was a little bit off in the second half. And, and um, he's just too good of a player to be off. You know, he's too far along now to do that. You know, we need him to dominate and, and, and be precise in what he does, because that's how confident we are in his abilities. Yeah, I think we really, um, I think our, key, our team was uh, excited to get the win. You know what I mean? I think that was a big part of it. Uh, I, I talked about it was a growing process for us because they know, you know, we talked today after practice and we said, guys, we didn't play near as well as we can play, but we won, right? And that's good learning for us. And so there's confidence gaining with our team, but the confidence is only coming through how we practice and how we perform. And I told him, if you look around you, there's a lot of guys on our team that are getting better. You know, Elijah Johnson uh, had an unbelievable game. I don't have all of his production stats in front of me, but just talk about young players that are developing. They, they threw at him nine times and didn't complete a pass, and he had multiple passes broken up and very, you know, a lot of uh, disruptive production. Uh, play as well. So he, he also got 12 helmet decals for us, was our player of the week defensively. So that's just a position that coming into the year, we said, okay, we're going to play some young guys there, right? And they're getting better and better. And um, so that, so they see that guys around them are get the positions that we need to get better are getting better. You know, it's nice to get the play. We're getting out of Cal Waller stat at linebacker, right? And uh, I talked about Stephen Hubbard at tackle. So they see names that might not necessarily are the returners from last year that are that are players. Those guys obviously are doing good things. You know, Praise had a really good game, right? Because there's been talk about Praise not having great production. We had 10 helmet decals and had some opportunities on that last drive to make some sacks. There was one that he got, you know, double team tackled. Uh, should have gotten the left guard and tackle should have got assisted tackles on the play and it didn't get called. Um, that uh, you know he's he was being disruptive when he when he needed to, when he needs to be so some of our season guys Kelton Moss played really really good you know there's he was eating up double team one time they had a triple team on him and um, so those guys are playing good but it's the young guys now so they're gaining our guys are seeing the older guys are seeing some of those young guys step up and so now it's just a matter you know every game's big you know every game's gigantic for our team. Uh, during this stretch, and so now it's just a matter of just finding a way to grind out and fight out some victories. Were you uh, surprised of, uh, on the time of possession in the second half? Yes, yeah. And what did that tell you? 
Well, we didn't play very good. Yeah, we didn't play very good. It's not our style, right? The first half was our style. I think it was 22 minutes of possession time, and the second half obviously was pretty close to being flipped or even more than that. So uh, not, not, not good for That's not how we play. You know, too many three and outs and, and uh, you know, giving up uh, too many first downs from them. Is, uh, what's Justin Prince's status this week? Uh, he's out. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's suspended right now. I don't know that yet. Yeah. Don't know that yet. Last question. I mean, just, we've talked a lot about it, but with all the junior college guys that you have brought into the program, and why is that? Why is the junior college route been so good? Oh, okay. Yeah. The junior college route uh, has been. Uh, just we've used our connections, Colin, through the years of having guys that have been at these junior colleges for a long time, coaches that we have relationships with, and they're giving us their players that they feel like are a good fit for the programs that some of us have been at that we've recruited to those schools and uh, are try have tried to give us some guys that they feel like have been maybe – maybe a little bit under the radar guys that end up being really, really good players, right? And we got, I can go on and on about who those guys are that we've recruited. Um, and so we've just had, you know, I think a lot of it goes back to have recruited these junior colleges for many, many years. And we have a good feel of what type of players or personalities from those junior colleges can come out and do well in, in, in four-year schools. Okay, thanks everybody. That was a pretty long one today, huh?